Good evening. Welcome to this evening's edition of the Vision Root Video Blog. I'm your host, Richard Urban, coming to you from historic Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. This is the fifth in a series of seven, and now we're just about three days away from the presidential election. I'd like to start off tonight with a scripture reading from Nehemiah uh, chapter 6, verses 9 through 15. They were all trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work and it will not be completed. But I prayed, now strengthen my hands. One day I went to the house of Shemaiah, son of Deliah, the son of Medabel, who was shut in at his home. He said, let us meet in the house of God inside the temple and let us close the temple doors because men are coming to kill you. By night they're coming to kill you. But I said, should a man like me run away or should someone like me go into the temple to save his life? I will not go. I realized that God had not sent him, but that he had prophesied against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. He had been hired to intimidate me so that I would commit a sin by doing this, and then they would give me a bad name to discredit me. Remember Tobiah and Sanballat, my God, because of what they have done. Remember also the prophet Noadiah and how she and the rest of the prophets have been trying to intimidate me. So the wall was completed on the 25th of Elul in 52 days. This is a wall around Jerusalem. And that's our um, reading for tonight. Well, as we start off, I'd like to um, announce tonight's topic, of course, Hillary Clinton's Murderers Pay to Play. And I'd like to uh, show this uh, clip of Julian Assange of the WikiLeaks talking about the murder of Seth Rich. And he was a Democratic National Committee staffer in charge of voter uh, outreach, and he was mysteriously murdered in Washington, D.C. Supposedly a robbery, but nothing was taken. It wasn't a robbery, it was an assassination. Let's watch Material. this clip now. Uh, our whistleblowers go to significant efforts to get us material, and often very significant risks. As a 27-year-old who uh, works for the DNC, who was shot in the back, murdered, uh, just two weeks ago, uh, for un unknown reasons, as he was walking down the street in Washington. So that was that was just a robbery, I believe, wasn't it? No, it's, there's no finding. So uh, what that's are you the suggesting? Sort of, what are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that our sources uh, take risks, and they are they become concerned uh, to see things occurring uh, like that. But was he one uh, of your sources then? I mean. We don't comment on who our sources but are. Why but why make the suggestion about a young guy being shot in the streets of Washington? Because uh, we have to understand uh, how high the stakes are uh, in the United States and that our sources are, you know, our sources face serious risks. Uh, that's why they come to us, so we can protect uh, their anonymity. Uh, but it's quite and, something to suggest and, a murder. So, that's basically what you're doing. Well, that others have have suggested that uh, we are investigating to understand uh, what happened uh, in that situation with Seth Rich. I think it is uh, a concerning situation. Uh, there's not a conclusion yet. We wouldn't be willing to um, state a conclusion, but we are concerned about it. And more importantly, um, the, a variety of WikiLeaks sources are concerned when that kind of thing happens. So when we talk about Hillary Clinton, we're talking about really a demonic woman. She really is that kind of person. So what happened to Seth Rich? Julian Assange uh, implied strongly that he was a source of the WikiLeaks from the Democratic National Committee. And, you know, it's a funny personal story. When I heard that and heard that he'd been murdered in D.C. and that his wallet hadn't been taken or his watch, I immediately thought, the guy's been murdered. It's a cover-up. He's a source of the WikiLeaks. And I didn't know that Julian Assange had um, announced that. In fact, it might even been before he did announce it. Anyway, I didn't know that. Um, I think that very likely he was a source of the DNC WikiLeaks. So here is Hillary Clinton blaming the Russians and even making war, nuclear war, saber rattling with the Russians to cover up the things she's doing. The Russians had nothing to do with these leaks. 
She's claiming, uh, you know, during on national television on debates that the Russians did this. And it's interesting, an article came out showing that actually one of the top donors to Hillary, uh, Bill and Hillary Clinton's foundation, the Clinton Foundation, was uh, from Ukraine. And according to this article, this person uh, donated over a million dollars to the Clinton Foundation, and he was trying to get support to speak out against Putin. What a coincidence. This guy who's against Putin gave over a million dollars to the Bill and Hillary Clinton Foundation, and then somehow he, um, Mrs. Clinton is blaming Putin. Might that be a connection, a conflict of interest? Well, it certainly might well be. You know, that might be, certainly be a connection there. So that's a really, really incredible thing going on. And we need to be, you know, aware of, the, of these kind of conflicts of interest. So, I mean, I've got a stack of things I printed out in preparation for this video of these comp incredible conflicts of interest. And one of the most, you know, sobering things is that was, um, which the founder of WikiLeaks also has just discussed in an interview in the last couple of days, is that, you know, from Saudi Arabia, the Clinton Foundation took, um, I think, some $10 million. At the same time, in the emails released from in, by WikiLeaks from John Podesta, it's noted that um, like Saudi Arabia and Qatar are the funders of ISIS. Well, wait a minute here. So the Secretary of State, the Secretary of State, the person responsible for our relations with foreign governments is taking through the Clinton Foundation, which is, by the way, against what she pledged to do, and an obvious conflict of interest, millions from Saudi Arabia and Qatar, they're sealing up $80 billion weapons deals, and these are the same countries that are funding ISIS. Well, wait a minute. So, okay, there, there's no problem there. Um, let's see, we have the Secretary of State taking billions from foreign entities through the foundation, which could never just be donated directly to a campaign. You can't donate foreign money like that. What the heck? And people are still willing to vote for this woman? Hello? I mean, holy crap. And there's so many people mysteriously died around the Clintons that Seth Rich is just one of them, you know? I mean, these people will stop at nothing. And an incredible conflict of interest. And then the oldest tactic out of whatever the uh, book of, you know, progressive leftists or the communists, as you will, blame the people who are bringing the, you know, blame the messenger for the same things you're doing, you know, taking taking, you know, funds from foreign governments and all these kind of things. And in another article, we see that reported this summer that one of the emails revealed that the Clinton Foundation staff reported all the money's in. So now we hear Clinton saying, well, if I'm elected president, and by the way, make sure you get to the polls so she will not be elected president, as I will certainly also get to the polls and spread this video and all kinds of information to your friends. What I'm saying is that she's saying, oh, well, we won't take any more money from foreign governments. Well, what the heck? She's already taken tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars. You know, shoot, it's meaningless. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. If it wasn't, you know, a crime, it would be laughable, the kinds of things she talks about. So, so the very people who are funding, the people we're supposed to be fighting against, are giving money to this foundation. And that's okay? What the heck? This is criminal. And in fact, the FBI is now investigating this, and I predict very well she's going to be indicted for this. That's what I think. Serious crimes have been committed, and she has committed serious conflicts of interest, and for all I know, or we know, criminal activities of these through these conflicts of interest. And then blaming Russia and saber rattling, doing nuclear saber rattling. And people are saying, oh, Trump is uh, not stable. Trump is not stable. This devil woman is not stable. She shouldn't be anywhere near the White House. Um, these incredible conflicts of interest and just the evilness 
of this person. And so taking money from Saudi Arabia, Qatar, as I've mentioned in previous videos, claiming that she's for human rights, the very people who are funding ISIS, and she's the Secretary of State, and taking money from the people who she knows and admits herself for funding ISIS? What the heck? That's, a, that's enough to lock her in jail right there. And what about this foundation? Well, one person told me, oh, the Clinton Foundation is doing such wonderful work. Well, in 2013, they gave charitable grants of only 10%. Let's see. So, um, a lot of the money was spent on other things. They claim that 88% goes to their work, but that is simply not, not true. 88% of their uh, charitable work foundation's money does not go to their work. 34% was for other expenses. 33% were for salaries and benefits. 6% was for office supplies. Spent millions on office supplies. Must have a big staff. 10% was on travel. So basically, they have this organization that just flies around influential people to collect a lot of money. And let's segue through that but doing little or no charitable work. They used to give some millions of dollars for AIDS prevention. Well, that's controversial too because they contracted with an Indian drug company that had to give a $500 million, that's half a billion dollar fine because their drugs were adulterated. This is the drugs they were distributing in Africa that might have even harmed the people more than helped them. And what about their work in Haiti? They got a $10 million donation for a felon who never built one house, and that money will never be repaid. Oh, yes, the Clinton Foundation does great charitable work. What the heck? Look, I have a charity, Urban Life Training. Shoot, if we did this kind of work, we'd, we'd be in jail. What the heck? I mean, seriously, such inept and competent work and so much money going for traveling and conferences, staff salaries. Of course, you have to have staff, but I mean, really, one-third of the money going for staff salaries? Wow, they have some pretty well-paid people over there, I would say, <clears throat> to say the least. And then Doug Band, recently in the WikiLeaks, uh, proclaiming that he not only got donations for the foundation from the likes of Coca-Cola and other companies, but at the same time got these same companies to give to the foundation. Oh, what a coincidence. And got the companies to give Mr. Clinton some hundred thousand dollars a pop for speaking. Oh yeah, it was just for a speech. Must have been a pretty good speech for a hundred thousand dollars. Give me a break. This is complete pay for play. This is completely illegal, completely compromised. Awaken to reality. This is a complete criminal activity. And then she tries to blame all this stuff on, you know, hacking on Russia when people of goodwill like Seth Rich, Seth Rich is dead now. Very likely, I believe, he's the source of the leaks from the DNC. What the heck? And they blame it on Putin and try to start a war to distract from that. This woman is that crazy. She would start a nuclear war to try to cover up her own sins. So I, I, I'd like to, you know, really, I mean, wow, this has got me going. I mean, this, this is so incredible, just article after article. The AP reported this summer that over half the meetings with non-government officials that Hillary Clinton had as Secretary of State were to donors. What a coincidence. And not just little donors. People gave $100,000 and 40 people gave a million dollars to foundation. And she's there as Secretary of State. Oh, but that's okay. That's no conflict of interest. She completely didn't follow the rules they gave her. And what the heck, even if they, she <laughs> the rules weren't even any good to begin with. How could they allow this stuff? You know, to be uh, still working with the foundation as Secretary of State, basically creating a perfect pr uh, private fundraising or actually criminal mafia operation to support, you know, her husband and their own self enrichment. Oh my gosh. So, uh, wow. So, I mean, you've got to really be aware of this, you know. Incredible. Just this incredible corruption around, um, you know, uh, Clinton and all these things that that they've done. And the fact that they're taking tens of millions of dollars from the same countries that are funding ISIS. 
What the heck? And not she's not just anybody. That would be bad enough for anybody. But the Secretary of State. Oh my gosh. So some recent news came out today, Friday, November 4th, that, you know, they're saying some vague threats of uh, possibly of Al-Qaeda terrorism on Election Day. Well, what a coincidence. What the heck? That could be a false flag operation, meaning they're trying to scare people away from voting. But don't be scared. Just like it said in Nehemiah, get out there and vote no matter what. You know, even if whatever happens Monday, if some crazy stuff happens, who knows? Clinton would do anything. I swear. You know, she. I'm sure she'd be willing to murder people to meet her ends, as is very likely she's done. She'll take money from foreign entities that totally compromises the integrity of the position of Secretary of State. Not just that. It's like criminal. And... And then now, suddenly, conveniently, there's that word that there might be some Al-Qaeda threat. In any case, nonetheless, and all the more, you know, no matter how much this is put in the media, I think this is a false flag. They're probably trying to put that out to discourage people from going to the polls. That's what I would think. That's just my opinion. Take it as you will. But in any case, be, do, be sure to get out and vote on Tuesday. Don't let anything discourage you. Have Take heart. Do not fear, as said Nehemiah, people will try to make you cower and fear, but know that, you know, God is in the right and this wicked woman will not be elected. And you please make sure that that does happen by fulfilling your own portion of human responsibility and getting out and voting no matter what on this Tuesday, November 8th. I hope you've enjoyed this segment. I hope you will be blessed. And our topic tonight has been Hillary Clinton's murderous pay to play. Thank you and for watching. Good night. This is Rich Urban reporting from historic Harpersbury, West Virginia. Good night.